Peace, everyone. Good afternoon. This is Angela Jordan Perry, the owner, director, and administrator of this Option 3 Accountability Association here in the state of South Carolina, which is United Community of Homeschoolers Unlimited. So come on in. Let's do a Let's Talk session. This is a session where I just talk to you heart to heart. You know, not so much of the laws of homeschooling and the things you have to do, et cetera, et cetera. This is just a, a mama's heart to parents' heart, whether your dad or your mom um, or grandmother or a legal guardian who is considering homeschooling. This is my heart to your heart, just very transparent and open. So snuggle on in and let's have a little chat. Before I get started, let me let you know who I am. I am Angela Jordan Perry. I am a homeschool mom myself to eight children for 19 years. I'm a life partner to Tyrone Perry. <laughs> now for 27 years, we just had an anniversary, 27 years, we make our home in the upstate of South Carolina where we are self-sustaining farmers. My purpose-driven life is to make a positive impact on thousands of homeschoolers worldwide, worldwide. And I make that mark right here in South Carolina, serving the community throughout the state of those who are homeschooling or desiring to homeschool. So what I do as an option three director is give families legal status to homeschool in the state. And I have members, a part of my association, so that they can homeschool legally who are all over South Carolina, okay? Only if you're in South Carolina can I assist you, okay? I can coach you in homeschooling and give you some advice and how-tos of homeschooling, whatever state you're in. But if you're in South Carolina specifically, I can give you that status to be able to legally homeschool, all right? My um, outreach is into many, into a vast uh, number of resources and entities that I've created. One is Girlfriend's Guide to Homeschooling with Angela Jordan Perry. Uh, that is a platform that's for the African diaspora community. I have Educating Our Own. Again, that is for the, uh, the African diaspora community. I have a podcast. It's called Girlfriend's Chat, which is an extension of Girlfriend's Guide to Homeschooling. I'm on Facebook and YouTube. And then the Homeschool Upstart, which many of you have found, and now you are connected with me here on Facebook and YouTube. Okay, so that's just a little bit about myself. I'm a vegan. I love to exercise. I'll be leave, leaving in just a little bit to go to the gym. Uh, let's see what else. I love to read books. I've just found a new love, Audible Books. Yes, I'm very much behind, but I usually like to have a book in my hand. Now I'm going to Audible because I can get multiple things done at one time. So this is just a little bit about myself. All right, so let's talk about killing anxiousness in homeschooling. And I put, took some notes so that I can get straight to the point and not scatter here and there and all over the place. <laughs> but let's kill anxiousness in homeschooling. Now, many of you who are on these platforms of YouTube and Facebook have either uh, are homeschooling or considering homeschooling, but you're nervous. You're nervous. You're nervous and you just don't know if you can do it and all the worries and fears that you have. Let's talk about that today and squash many of them today. And this happens over a period of time, but let me just let you know, I don't know too many people who start homeschooling who are not anxious and just nervous and wonder if they can even do it, if they are capable of schooling their own children. And I was like that. And I was so anxious about homeschooling. I really went into overkill, you know, which is, you know, we take pride. This is the truth, right? We take pride in our kids and all that they know, all that they can quote, all that they can recite, all that they've learned, all the books that they've read, all the accomplishments that they have in their academia or in, you know, just saying their alphabets or do they know their colors at nine months old? You know, we, we get very proud of our kids and feel like what an accomplishment of our child if they know all these things at such a young age, right? And so I was very anal at the beginning um, about schooling and very nervous. And so I wanted to make sure I did it right. And my little four-year-old, she was so sweet. We actually started schooling uh, about three, but she was so sweet. She just took it in like a sponge where most kids will. They would take it in like a sponge and just regurgitate it back until I realized that about, mm, I would say her eighth grade year, seventh, eighth grade year that, dude, I need to chill. You know, I had her in a program called Classical Conversations, and I was just, you know, making sure all this stuff got shoved into her knowledge, information, blah, 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 blah. But the most important thing I realized that I did not instill in child number one 
I don't think I did, maybe I'll ask her and see what she says, is just a love of learning. You know, that's what it really comes down to when you're homeschooling. So let me give some points. How to kill anxiousness in homeschooling. Write out your goals. Write out why you even want to homeschool. What? Because the why will ground you every time. If your why is so that they can be the smartest and get all the scholarships and go off to college, then, I mean, so be it. Uh, just and that's your that's your anxiousness behind it. We got to get there. I got to make sure you have a transcript that looks superior. I got to make sure you're number one. <clears throat> I got to make sure. And you're just anxious. You're not relaxed in your homeschooling journey. Whatever the goal is, write it down. Write down that why. Get a coach or a mentor if you're really nervous about getting started on this schooling or you're already started and you're just beside yourself of worry. Okay. Get a coach or a mentor. I am a coach. I have coaching fees. You can look you know, look for those right here on Facebook or go to my website at www.uchunlimited.com. And that's what I do. I coach people through. They, you know, you have one way of thinking and I'm telling you, uh, maybe consider this, you know, get a coach or a mentor. Look at videos, go to my YouTube channel and just download information and you're going to hear so much encouragement. Another thing to get killed anxiousness is homeschooling is don't compare. Just don't compare yourself or your kids or your homeschooling journey to someone else. <laughs> their journey is their journey. Yours is yours. And be unique. That's the beauty of homeschooling. You get to be unique and create the atmosphere, the vibe, the energy, the your place of educating your children in the way that you and they desire and will feel most confident and ability with the ability to thrive. Don't compare. Realize you are not perfect and nor is public school. Okay. So we get so nervous that we can't do it. We can't do it. We just trust the public school, public school. And, and I'm not downing public school at all. I'm a product of public school, but I just know that we can do better in our children's education because they're going to get, they're going to receive the one-on-one -on -one attention. They are going to have the plethora of information in which they can engage and learn. We're not going to tell them you can only do this because at the end, we got to do a test. And you got to pass the test so that we can keep our accreditation to keep homeschooling. We don't have any of that in our homeschooling. So we can relax and we can say, here's everything. What is it that you want to learn? I'm going to ensure these things that you learn according to the South Carolina law. But what else do you want to learn? Are you interested in bones? My daughter went through this major interest in anthropology and all she wanted to do was bones, 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 bones. She looked at the TV show bones, looked at all the seasons now about five, six, seven times. She had this thing. And guess what? That was nothing on my radar to teach her. Not at all. That was a love that she discovered and she drew up all the bones, had them all over her wall in her room, over her desk. Love, love, love bones until she was consumed with it, could tell you every bone and the connection to the ligaments and all that. That was because I said, here, here's the table, the buffet. What do you want to learn? Had another child. And, and they have processed through things. Once they've learned it, then they're ready for the next thing. Never on my radar, but it's their interest. Chess, origami, uh, design, clothing design and jewelry design. Um, what else? Just so many things that my kids have just dove into not because I told them, it's because I just gave them an open plate. So realize you are not perfect and nor is public school. But what we do have that public school does not have is we have the freedom for them to learn at their pace. Give it all to them and let them choose, okay? You're not looking for perfection in homeschooling. You're just looking for the ability to foster their love of learning because you know like I know what we learned in school was just this much we're continuously learning even at our age that we are now we don't stop and as we want to know we will learn and we will figure it out let them just be thirsty for knowledge the goal is this is what I said the goal is to instill the love of learning okay I won't talk about that more but that's the biggest goal I can tell you Book knowledge is great. Completing the required, required, required subjects that South Carolina lays out for us, for those who are in this state, we have to follow those things. But 
<laughs> to be able to encourage them to go beyond those five little subjects, math, science, social studies, reading, and writing. Those are the requirements. And if they're seventh to 12th grade, then you have to add in literature and composition. Oh my gosh, so much more they have interest in. And we should do our part to foster those things and not shove it, but let them guide us. It's a little bit of unschooling. I'm very much a, a, a cheerleader for unschooling. I, Our kids come out to have such a vast amount of knowledge across a plethora of um, resources. Hi, Latrice, okay? Um, this is a big thing. Don't do public school in your home. This is one thing that would kill anxiousness, where you feel like you have to be the public school in your home, and you don't. You don't have to have a school room. You don't have to have desks. You don't have to have a board up in front of and what you write notes on for your kids. You don't have to have all that. And we get so anxious if we're not doing that. You don't have to, but this is great if you need to. You don't have to have a plan book in which you follow, <laughs> okay? You don't have to. If you all take a moment and just share this, um, I'm gonna wrap up in a little bit. I have a few more points, but share this out and get this to people so they can hear. It's so many people who want to homeschool and just doubt themselves. And they're just anxious to even do it. Please hit the share button. I will so appreciate it, and they will too. You may have just given them the resource and the information that they just needed to know. All right, so don't do public school in your home. Relax. You're not a you're not the public school teacher. You're a mom or a dad or a legal guardian who are in their home. We my kids have school on the kitchen table, maybe on the floor, sitting lounged in a chair, on their bed leaning off. Maybe we pack it up and we're head out somewhere we're going and they're doing school in the car. School is a, uh, we live life, right? So I want to encourage you to live life and just schooling is just a part of it. It's just a part. So get rid of that anxiousness by getting rid of the idea mentality that public school, you have to have it look like public school. You don't, but if that's you and you like that, fine. And you're not anxious and you can do it, great. But if you're anxious and you're concerned and that's one of the concerns, then I'm talking to you. Okay. Relax. They will get it. This is another thing of anxiousness in homeschool. And you're just like, oh, am I going to teach my kids what they need to know? Will they get it? Are they going to learn? Oh, I'm going to fail. I'm going to miss something. I'm going to leave holes. I'm going to leave gaps. Oh my gosh. I've heard that so many times. I'm telling you things I've heard. And these are all the things that cause anxiousness in homeschooling your kids. Oh my goodness. Your kids would get it. I was that way with my first one. I was that a little bit less with my second one. And a little bit less with my third, and I've gotten less and less and less because I've seen the product of my schooling, <laughs> my, you know, schooling my kids. And granted, you're looking at someone who all I know and I love a lot is I can speak Spanish fluently. I love math and I can teach math. And I enjoy teaching English and writing. Hey, that's me. History, science, anything else. Is not my favorite, and I really know that I bum at it. So guess what I do? I find other resources to fill in those gaps. All right? So relax. They will get it. How do I know? Because my oldest, let's say her last two years, I finished my kids at schooling at 15 years old. That's uh, the number. My son finished at 16. But 15 years old. So my daughter, her last two years, her 16, 17 year age years of school, the last two years, up in 12th grade, she was at North Greenville taking classes with college students, and the professors never knew she was a homeschool student who was just, just turned 16. They had no clue. Why? She held her own. She was able to study, learn, and ace her tests. Number two, son, I told you I finished him really at 16, but he went off and took the ASVAB test and blew it out of the water. Yeah, the ASVAB test for military blew out the water and I just knew we had all sorts of holes because he was just like my, I want to, I guess the only word I can think of right now, lazy learner. <laughs> he was just like, oh, he just gave, he gave me the, made it just the hardest for me to foster that love of learning. But he, he took that test and I was like, Jordan, why did all these years you drive me crazy with this schooling and you could do it. Anyway, see, no holes. He scored way high in his reading and the comprehension on the ASVAB, and so did he do on SAT and the ACT test. They will get it, trust me. My third one, she went off to college at 16, okay? She could have went off at 15, but she wasn't ready to leave home. She went all the way to Mississippi, 
And uh, needless to say, she has been on the president's and dean's list every year. She's entering her junior year this year. Whole honey, I didn't even teach her that well in math. <laughs> I just pretty much gave her the book and said, here, study. <laughs> she did. So take out the anxiousness because they will get it. If you hone in on their uh, ed, um, the elementary school years, making sure they have a strong foundation. Can they read? Great, because then they can read later. <laughs> Anything they need to read. Do they understand math and at least up to multiplication? If they get that, boom, they can learn anything they need to learn in math. Can they write? Do they have a decent handwriting where they can write and understand? Because having a decent handwriting is important. Then great, then they can write papers. And if they have some understanding of the, the components of grammar, then great, they're gonna get it later. I'm telling you, the elementary years are the foundation. We don't have to get anxious about that. To just make sure they understand those basics. The rest, they can do it on their own. All right. Listen, you can do it, and you don't. You will not fail. That alone would kill the anxiousness. If you just hear someone say you can do it, you will not fail. You can do it, you will not fail. I'm going to say that again. You can do it, you will not fail your kids. You are going to be their best advocate in this journey of homeschooling. You're going to make sure what they need to know, they know. And if you can't give it to them, maybe you have dyslexia. Maybe you have some learning challenges. Maybe you felt like your schooling was not the best. There's so many resources out here so that they can get it. And uh, just connect them to, if you need to know resources, reach out to me. Click on that book it button here on Facebook. If you're seeing this on YouTube, then go to my website, set up a, a schedule, a time to chat with me by phone, 15 minutes, no charge at all. You can schedule it on the time and date that works best for you. Let's get on the phone and talk. I love to just encourage you. You can do it. Then create your own timetable. Create your own timetable. Well, really with your kids in mind, okay? This will kill off the anxiousness where you feel like, oh, my kids are behind. I hate when I hear homeschoolers say that. Oh, my kids are behind. I'm, I'm behind what? What are they behind on? Oh, they're behind because they don't know what the public school third graders know. Who, don't compare that. Compare your kid to your kid, all right? Compare your child to your child. Where they need to be, they will be. And just keep them trekking along. I promise you. I know a lot of tricks of the trade so that you never feel like they're behind. My kids are never behind. So even if I take two years to complete second grade, I don't know if I've done that, but if I take two years to complete second grade, I'm not worried because here's my secret. I always skip middle school years. They're a waste of years. Sixth, seventh, eighth grade, they're a waste. We just take our time in middle school and go through high school. Maybe we have we have done algebra two over two years. We've done algebra two over algebra one over two years. We've done chemistry over two years. We have done biology over two years. Different ch children have done that. Why? I got a lot of time on my hands. Why? Because we don't do the sixth and seventh, eighth grade. I make sure the elementary school years are firm. Then I introduce them right into high school stuff. They're not behind. <laughs> so there's a lot of tricks of the trade. I'd love to share those if you have questions. And then the last one, relax. This will kill anxiousness in your homeschooling. Relax, breathe. Get out, see the world, take your kids and get them out of the house. Do not spend all day in that house homeschooling. You're schooling really elementary school years, an hour and a half if they're kindergarten, to uh, no, an hour if they're you know kindergarten, an hour and a half um, if they're uh, first grade, second grade, third grade, maybe two hours, fourth grade, maybe two. I say add 15 minutes for every grade level. So by the time they get to high school, it is a little longer. A day is a little longer because they have more studies. Maybe now we're looking at four hours, five hours. <sighs> Just relax. Relax. All right. So that's the biggest thing I want to tell you to kill anxiousness and homeschooling. You can do it. I love to chat with you if you want to know more. Set up a time to chat with me. Go to my virtual calendar on Facebook. It's just the blue book. It. That is my virtual calendar. You can click on it and I'll put it here in the in the um, notes here as well so that you can have that. So you can click on it and, or send me an email. I'm reachable. You can text me. You can email me. You can call me. You can send me a message here on social media. I'm reachable and I want to help you and serve you. If you are with another association, be sure to go to that director. 
But if you're part of my association or are considering to join this, I am here for you. My time is your time, <laughs> okay? All right, take care. This is Angela Jordan Perry. Go to my website at uchunlimited.com. YouTube is United Community of Homeschoolers Unlimited. On Facebook is United Community of Homeschoolers Unlimited. Uh, get school legally in state. Oh, my connection. I don't know if this is good or not, but let me help you homeschool in this state and let me help you get legally homeschooling and killing anxiousness in homeschooling.